Welcome to the next video in the evolution topic. This video will be looking at three dot points from the Life on Earth syllabus 8.4.43 explain how levels of organization in hierarchical systems assist classification. 8.4.46 identify and discuss the difficulties experienced in classifying extinct organisms. And 8.4.47 Explain how classification of organisms can assist in developing an understanding of present and past life on Earth. So we'll start off with the first one. Uh, explain how levels of organization can assist in classification. So how do we classify things? We use what are known as levels of organization or levels of taxonomy to help provide specific information about an object. So we can use your address as an example. So your address works to pinpoint an exact person by each level of your address, narrowing down um, your information. So when we look at taxonomy wise, we start usually from the biggest group and take it down to the individual. Whereas with your address, we start with the individual, but as we move further down each of the lines, we can see that uh, we're narrowing it down. So Harry Potter lives in the cupboard under the stairs of four Privet Drive, Little Winging, Surrey, England, Earth. So we can see that Earth is obviously the planet is the largest group of where everybody on uh, who has an address lives. England then narrows it down to the country, Surrey into the region. Little Winging is this is the same as our suburbs in Australia. Our streets four Privet Drive. And then even more specific with the cupboard under the stairs. And lastly, there's only one person, Harry Potter, which is what we want to look at with our levels of organisation, is taking it all the way down to the species level. So we can classify living things by using this inverted triangle uh, to show the levels of organisation in uh, taxonomy. So we start off with the kingdom. So the kingdoms are divided into those six that we looked at in the previous video. So six kingdoms, those kingdoms are then divided into phylum, phylum are divided into class, order, family, genus, and species. So the kingdom is the biggest group with the fewest similarities. So if we take the animal kingdom, for example, there's lots of different animals that fit into the animal kingdom, but there's not many that humans actually have a great deal of similarities with so you wouldn't um, think that there are many similarities between humans and a slug but there's enough similarities for us both to fit into the kingdom into the kingdom animalia this species is then the smallest group with many similarities so you only have one species uh, so humans are homo sapiens as we've looked at so all homo sapiens have the same very similar, uh, have the same types of properties or um, features. And then there's obviously variation within that species, but we all are bipedal, we all have a large cerebrum, we are all um, able to form speech and all able to uh, carry out logic thought. So how can we remember the order? A mnemonic is a fun way to remember a list of words in order. So for the levels of classification, we need to remember them in order being kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And one way that we can remember these is keep putting condoms on for good sex. So it's probably a little bit more M-rated than one you may have heard of in the past. So King Phil calls ordinary families generous and special, probably not as exciting as this one here. So hopefully it'll help you to remember the order. So how can we use classification uh, or how can we identify and discuss the difficulties experienced in classifying extinct organisms? So our biological classification scheme is used not just for today's living things, but for all extinct species that we know from fossils. There are obviously some problems classifying an, organisms, an organism from its fossils alone. So modern classification relies on cell structure at some levels. In most fossil imprints, the cell details have not been preserved. So usually we've only got an imprint or a hard shell. So we don't actually have the availability to find that um, those cell structures and look at them under the microscope. The use of DNA technologies and biochemical analysis, which are so useful for, for finding 
relatedness among living organisms cannot be used on most fossils because the organic chemicals have not been preserved in fossilization. So we're unable to extract DNA from a lot of the different fossils. So again, we're unable to compare DNA similarities or other biochemicals such as amino acids. For a fossil such as that shown above, there's no, there's no problem classifying it. An expert in fish anatomy can probably decide on its groupings all the way down to the genus and even assign it a species name. For other fossils though, especially if they are very small and very ancient, exact classification is impossible without DNA samples and well-preserved cellular imprints. Clear cellular imprints are very rare and DNA samples do not survive fossilization, except in a few rare cases of animals being preserved by freezing for a few thousand years, but not for millions of years. The Jurassic Park scenario of rebuilding dinosaurs from fossilized DNA could not really happen at the moment. Obviously, there's nothing saying that they couldn't improve the ability to extract DNA from fossilized organisms, in particular those mosquitoes and things that get trapped in amber, but currently where we're at in science probably isn't a realistic expectation. So how has classification helped us to understand present and past life on Earth? So we've been able to order organisms. So by grouping organisms together, it brings about a sense of order and also simplifies the description of things. Through communication, all scientists throughout the world use the same names no matter what language they speak. And this means that there's no confusion when classifying an organism, whether one that is still living or one that has been extinct. By showing relationships with other organisms that are present today, we are able to also show some evolutionary pathways and how we get from one organism, one group of organisms to the next. And lastly, conservation. So through classification and observing organisms in different ecosystems, we can learn about endangered species and try to save them from extinction in the future. And that brings us to the end of this video. And thank you for watching.